Previously on the Tom Likas Show. You are the kind of man who cannot think anything else but Right? Like most men. I think about that. I'm sure that you think about it too, but some men think you and some not. men do. Think about sex and you did try four times and then you move and let, oh, now you're I, I, I couldn't care less about trying marriage. Harry, I get laid. You can't. When's the last time you had sex, Harry? I don't want to tell you. That's my personal the thing. Is Come on. You're anonymous. How many years? How many years? How many years? How many years? How many years has it been since you got laid? That's not my question. Yeah. I, are you a virgin? I'll be, you're the 31 year old virgin, I'll bet. I mean, it's nothing to do with my question. I mean, you don't. I mean, I just don't try to listen to you, but I, I understand that that's what I figured out that you did. Try because to you can't that. get laid. And because you can't meet any girls. You around you. You and can't meet any girls. No girls will go out with you. You know and what? Why are you? Why are you trying to make me down? You, you, can I tell I'm you something, Harry? Anybody who has a vagina, you can't. Beggars can't be choosers. If a woman has a vagina, you at least should be talking to her. No, I, I will. You can't afford. You, you understand what I'm saying? You can't afford to say no to any woman. You can't afford it. You cannot afford it. Do you? Do, do you understand that? Yeah, I understand. Why do you think so? Because you haven't gotten laid in years. I think you're a virgin. So what? It's whatever you think. You're the president of the United States. You are a virgin, aren't you? You've never... I'll bet you've never seen a woman naked. How can you say that? Because you sound like a virgin. Oh, wow. Dear God. How can you say that? Like, okay, how can When's you... the last time you got laid? When is the last time you got laid, Harry? When is the last time you got laid? Why do I tell you my personal thing? Well, there's nothing to tell. That's why you won't tell me, because you have nothing to tell me. You have not making the point. You have, you have never had sex, have you? You have ne you've never had an orgasm with someone else in the room at the same time, have you? How can you say that? You don't know me, you know. Because your voice gets higher every time I say it. You do. When I said that you tried four times and you couldn't make it. You have never, listen carefully, you have never, ever had sex, have you? Ever. I mean, what, what do you want to make the point? What I'm point? just saying, you know what? Guys love to brag about when they get laid. And that's how I know you've never had sex. Because, you know, guys would lie and say, I got laid this morning. You can't even my lie. Question. My question you is you can't you even lie to me. You can't find a woman. Your parents can't find you. Can't even get an arranged marriage. And now, now it's obvious you are a virgin. You can't even get laid. You can't, you've never had sex, have you? And you don't stop in the point. You've never had sex, have you? The thing is, my question is how you are going to raise a girl. I'm not. Okay. okay. In case you have... I'm going to have sex with your sister. That's what I'm going to do. But that... I'm going to have sex with your sister. Man, you're going to say that on air. I can fool you for that. Don't I think I wouldn't. So mad. Don't you're think so I mad. wouldn't. I, I mean, I, I'm not going to tell you I'm going to... I could nail your you sister know. six ways from Sunday. From somewhere in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. You put this in your mouth and it is just zippy. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues for you. Really care about it's in every kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TALK. one 800 5800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. This story from the BBC. More than half of women would think about asking a friend to have children with them if the right person doesn't come along, according to a survey. 
Hey, Poindexter, I know I've never shown much interest in you. I know you invited me to dinner. I know you sent me flowers. I know I told you thanks, but no thanks. Or that, that line women love to use, oh, I'm so flattered. I'm so, oh, Poindexter, that is so nice. You got me candy and flowers, and you know my favorite bottle of wine, and you got it for me, and it's so nice. But uh, I'm sorry. You know, I'm flattered. I just don't want to lose what we have, Poindexter. I just want to be friends. Is that okay? Just friends. Right. Well, guess what? Poindexter now is coming into play. More than half of women, according to the BBC, would think about asking a friend to have children with them if the right person doesn't come along. The study found that 56% of women would consider it if they hadn't found someone by a certain age, with 28 to 31 year olds being the most likely. The survey shows that many single men and women are worried about meeting a true love, as well as fertility issues. Really? Okay. It says here 26% of men worried they wouldn't be able to conceive naturally. About half the women who answered the survey admitted that they think about finding the right partner either frequently or on a daily basis. Do you know you're, uh, the chicks you're dating are walking around going, who am I going to get? Who am I going to get to father my kids? Who is it? Got to find the right guy. Says here, many also said they would, this is what I love so much. How many of you guys are this person? Many also said they would settle for second best if they didn't meet the right person. Psychologists, li yeah, right. How many of you, seriously guys, how many of you go to bed at night wondering if you're that person? I'm not kidding. How many of you have wondered if you are her second choice, or worse. I've been with women where I felt that way. You know, the first guy you were in love with, he dumped you. The second guy you were in love with, he dumped you. The third guy you were in love with, he dumped you. You know what? You're the love of my life. Tag your it. Meh. Says here, psychologist Linda Papadopoulos said, Interestingly, social norms of parenting and of the conventional family structure are being challenged. No longer do we see the mom, dad, and 2.4 children as the only idea. Reconstituted families, same-sex families, and single parents are much more prevalent these days. And rather than ascribing to the norm, it seems that women and men are more flexible with their definition of family. It seems that fertility is also a big issue for many women, with more than two-thirds who aren't in a relationship worrying that they won't be able to conceive naturally. Many respondents, both men and women, thought that fertility problems could end a relationship. I, I think that's true. Wow. I, uh, I want to talk about all of these issues with men and women. I mean, ladies, are you, uh, are you one of these people? You know, maybe you're 28 years old and you're walking around going, who's going to be the father of my kids? These guys are a bunch of dweebs, a bunch of dorks, or... No, nah, these guys, uh, this is the one that women love to say, these guys don't want to grow up. So how many of you are actively looking for a father? Even if it's somebody you're not going to settle down with. Maybe you're actively looking for a sperm donor. Maybe you're just, uh, you know, out on the town, tarting yourself up. And you don't even care if it turns into a relationship. Or how many of you have gone back to Poindexter in the IT department and said, you know what, Poindexter, I know you've been interested in me for a long time. Let's give it a go. Poindexter has no idea what you have in mind. So in this hour, I'd like to talk to women who are trying to find a parent, trying to find a father, trying to find a sperm donor, in essence. If you're one of those women, I'd like to talk to you at 1-800-5800-TOM. 
It's one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. And I wonder what you guys think about this survey. I mean, can you believe there are women who say they would settle for second best just to get the right father for their kid? No wonder so many people have affairs. Because they think they have married the second best, third best, fourth best choice. Somebody who would make a great parent. Somebody in my family who is very anxious to get out of the house and get married and have a kid found a guy who was quiet, respectful, responsible, and, um, you know, he had a steady job. He had a, an occupation. It was a trade, but he was always working. Paycheck always came home. He was faithful, loyal, great father. I mean a great father. Just great when they had the kid. And this uh, family member stormed in one day and said, I'm bored. He's boring. You wonder how many of you guys are in that position. Guys, have you ever thought about that? Have you ever wondered if the woman you're with thinks of you that way? That they uh, just got with you because they think you're a responsible guy, a good guy. You know, I think about all the years that uh, women have dated, you know, uh, the musicians, the poets, the actors, the guys who owned a Harley, the irresponsible guys with no jobs, the guys who provide cocaine or weed or whatever, uh, the guys who um, have uh, money and uh, will take you away for the weekend, uh, the ski instructors, the tennis instructors, whatever. And they've had just these amazing sexual experiences. Only down the line to find out that, uh, well, these guys are not responsible. These guys never grow up. These guys are perennial bachelors. I always found it offensive when a woman was in a relationship with me and then she would let it be known that after being with all these hot, exciting guys, that they felt comfortable settling down with me. I don't want to be the guy you're comfortable settling down with. I want to be the guy you complain to Poindexter about. I don't want to be Poindexter. Guys, do you wake up in the morning worrying that you are Poindexter? Worrying that you're not the first choice? Seriously. Do you wake up every morning saying, you know, she'd have been with the other guys if they hadn't dumped her. But these guys didn't want to get married or these guys didn't want to have a relationship. So you accept the idea of a relationship, but then you find out somehow you wake up in a cold sweat. You wake up and you say to yourself, my God, she chose me because I'm responsible. She chose me because I show up at home from work on time. She chose me because the, the paycheck comes home. It doesn't go to the racetrack. The paycheck doesn't go to the strip club. The paycheck doesn't go into stupid uh, uh, business schemes. The money comes home. You come home from work on time. You ever think to yourself, my God, she'd rather be with somebody else. There's somebody else she thinks is hotter. There's probably a lot of people she thinks are hotter, but she met you, you're responsible, she spun the wheel, and she picked you. Because I'll tell you honestly, I've been there. And ladies, have you been looking for a guy like that? Maybe you pick somebody like that. I mean, did you finally settle down with a guy? And You know he's not the best. You know he's not your first choice. But the guys you want as first choice probably don't want to have kids, don't want to get married, don't want to settle down. So Poindexter's looking pretty good to you. I want to hear all about it. Tom Likens. 1-800-5800-TOM. one 800 5800 Tom, I've been listening to you for a long time, and you got some kick-ass advice, dude. The Tom Likens Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. So a study in England comes out that says that more than half of women would consider friends to father their children if they hadn't found somebody to be in love with by the age range of 28 to 31. What do you know about this? Ralph on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. 
Hey, Tom. Hey. What's going on, man? Not much. Listen to you for a long time. Love it. Well, my story is uh, I've been married for 28 years, and about three years ago, my wife was doing, you know, saying how she's going to leave me, you know, because uh, she was bored. So I just started treating her the way that uh, you talked about, and, uh, boy, things turned around real quick. Oh, did they really? <laughs> yeah. You know, I started kind of being an a-hole, and uh, I guess she thought uh, that uh, maybe I was going to start stepping out or something, and, uh, boy, she turned around real quick, you know, afraid she was going to miss out on, like you say, the paycheck and uh, a little security there. So uh, thanks for listening to you. Things worked out pretty good. I read an interesting story this week that said that... Um you know, of course, anybody who's been paying attention knows that uh, the economy has been going in the crapper in a big way. Yeah. And that many people now, especially women, are choosing counseling over divorce uh, because uh, they're afraid that in divorce they won't come out so good. Yeah. So right. there you go, Ralph. Long pause. Moving on. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Alex on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, you know what? I'll let you know, man. Um, I'm having this relationship with my girl, and uh, it all started out as, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend. And, um, you know, as, as we started going out and, uh, you know, time was going through, she was telling me that, you know, she had the same thing going on, that she had a successful boyfriend who went to school and was making so much money, and they were going to have a baby. And I guess he just kept partying, you know, and she, he wasn't taking her too serious. Like, who would, you know? But I'm saying um, he started just um, partying, and, you know, she she got angry, and she never had the baby. And uh, I was the next boyfriend, and I'm the one who ended up having, you know, a baby with her. So you had the baby? Yeah. You know, she met me She met me while smoking out, getting high, and partying, and drinking, and, you know, I was a drummer with the band, you know, I was the drummer in a band, and... Um, she, you can say, uh, she started liking me and I liked her and, uh, we, we hooked up and then next thing you know, she, you know, everything changed, man. You know, it's just, I became a father and I'm not a musician no more and I'm not doing anything no more. I'm not getting drunk. I, you know, I'm this, this father she expects, you know, this, she's been expecting for all this time, you know, this father figure, you could say. Now, did she, did she go back to partying? No. Actually, um, she didn't go back to partying. She's 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 pretty much she works too, you know. And uh, we both work full time Monday to Friday. And but how does it feel to be like Poindexter, which you are, which I am? Well, it feels it feels real bad, Tom. You know, it feels like like used in a way. You feel like you were just like any you know anybody was just walking by. There you go. You're the father. I mean, I mean, I mean the, the worst feeling I ever had with a woman, honestly, all kidding aside, uh, was when I realized that a woman was with me because I was a responsible person, not because we had all this passion for each other or that we were, uh, you know, having a great time or anything like that. It was just because I was responsible. And I did not want to be that person. Neither do I, Tom. You know, I... I'm 25, man, you know, it's like uh, my friends are going partying all the time and they're just like, you're missing out, dude. And, you know, here I am supposed to be the the perfect father, you know, the father figure. And, you know, I can't be the same guy I used to when we first met, you know. Well, of course you can't. I mean, look, you had a baby. Now, now tell me, Alex, why did you feel the need to have a baby? You know what, Tom? I'm going to tell you this, you know, and I, I hope all these guys are listening out there, man, you know. I've been listening to you for a while, and it was like I was like, dude, I'll never be that guy. I'll never be that guy. You know, Tom is right. I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm a good student of Tom, and um, I was being stupid, Tom. I wasn't protecting myself, and I thought I met, you know, the most beautiful woman in the world, you know. And um, as you start living with this person, things change, you know. Well, of course they do, which I've been telling you for years. And and you know, it's like. I hit myself in the head so many times, and I'm like, you know what? This guy, this guy is so true, man. Tom knows what he's saying. He says it all the time. It's just that I just, I just have this feeling like, you know, it's always been in my head, and I'm sure all these guys have it in their head, you know. And it's like, 
your soul. Oh, boy. All right. Zero tolerance policy. You're out! Nice guy. Appreciates my uh, advice. A little late. But he used the F word, and we can't allow the F word. There you go. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here comes Carl on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going, man? Great. Hey, yeah, man, I have a story for you, bro. I, I met some chick and stuff, and um, we're dating for about four years and stuff. And um, and um, she kept t talking about some guy that she dated in high school and stuff. And uh, she just kept, and I found out she was texting him. Man, so I think that, you know, I might be the... The guy she settled for it because she couldn't get him. And uh, she keeps in touch with him. Yeah. See, I had that experience with somebody, too. Somebody who is living with me, but online texting and emailing people from the past. Yeah, man, I don't know. I, I, I'm a DTB. You know, if you uh, want to be with people from the past, there's the door. Exactly. All right, Tom, uh, take me out with a uh, bong room. Here you go, Carl. one 800 tom is our telephone number. A survey in England says that more than half of women would think about asking a friend to be the father of a child if the right person hasn't come along. These are primarily women between the ages of 28 and 31 years old. Are there any women like that listening to the program? I'd love to hear about it. Are there any guys out there who suddenly woke up one day and realized they were that person? The sperm donor. The reliable guy. The guy who was not afraid of commitment. But you were not the hot guy. You were not the passionate guy. You are not the guy she talked to her girlfriends about, you know, when you're in the sack. No, no. You were the sucker. The responsible sucker. Is that you? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Oh, hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm okay. Hey, you know, I think you, you're kind of making a black and white. You know, you're saying the responsible guy is not the hot guy, but it's not a, it's kind of gray. It's not a clear cut. Okay. Sure, when a guy is looking for somebody, she's going to get a responsible guy, but it doesn't typically mean the guy is going to be a a total, a total point dexter. But, but, know? but put it this way, it's very rare that the very hot guy that she has dreams about is also the responsible guy. Uh, just like it's very rare that chicks, the very hot chicks are intelligent, uh, well spoken, or have great careers. Well, that, in that, in that regard, when you're, when you're picking out a girl or something, you're, you're not gonna pick the, the cocktail waitress, the hot gal, you're gonna pick the one that's, you know, that probably has a better chance to have a good career and, and, and bring something into the relationship. You're not going to you know, get the one-night stand type of girl. That know? doesn't mean you like feeling like you are that person, does it? Well, in, in a way, you, you kind of are. I mean, you're always second to somebody. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to be, you know, you're there and George Clooney walks around, you know, your, you know, your wife leaves you for George Clooney. Well, you know, see you know what I'm saying? You're always... So you would about. you have no problem if your wife left you for George Clooney? Uh, I'd have a problem, but, uh, you know, I mean, just, you know, you kind of a, that's kind of an example, but, you know, there's, you're always second to somebody. There's always somebody that's going to be hotter than you are or somebody that's... No doubt about it, but when it's everybody, everybody comes ahead of you, or a lot of people come ahead of you, it's not just one person or two people, but essentially you were chosen because of your ability to be responsible and well, dependable. You, you, yeah, th yeah, that's a different situation. I mean, it, you don't think of yourself that way, but, you know, if you're very responsible and you got a good job, you think you bring more to the table than just responsibility. Would you help? Would you help a woman have a baby? Would I? No. Yeah. Hey, pal. Um, let's have a drink and talk about. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not getting any younger, and I'd like to have a baby. No, nah, too too many bad ramifications from that. <laughs> well, that's a that's a slippery slope. <laughs> and I agree with you on that. Hey, thanks a lot for the call. Half past the hour. On the Tom Likas Show here at 1-800-5800-TOM, we continue our conversation with you about women in a survey in England. More than half of women, they would, they would think about asking a friend to have children with them if the right person didn't come along. Do you know anything about this? Amanda on the Tom Likas Show, hello. 
Um, I'm kind of cutting out. I'm sorry I couldn't hear you. I said hello. Yes, hi. Now, right. now I'm saying nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Waiting for you to begin talking. Oh, I was just calling earlier about the, like, you made the comment You were about calling earlier? I mean, are you calling now? Yeah. Uh, well, who were you calling earlier? I was calling you guys. <laughs> well, you said you were calling earlier. Well, yeah. Did I already well, talk to you? No, I haven't talked to you yet, but I, okay, I called for the reason. Oh, that I mean, that's I, like those people who pre-board the flight at the airport? How can you pre-board? But how do you, what do you board before you board? I'm sorry, I can like barely hear. I guess I'm gonna have to. All right, I'll, I'll accept that as an excuse. What did you want to say, Amanda? I just wanted to say that I believe that you were under the assumption that girls dumped the guy, or the girls got dumped by the guy, and therefore were went toward guys. Well, what were you calling them? What are you, the people that got chosen instead of the Poindexter? Guy? The what? Oh Jesus, Poindexter? Yes. You're insulted that they're getting dumped and going to the point that they're... What about the assumption that they're the ones doing the dump, dumping because they want someone like that? And if we're now the guys... Well, that I don't understand dumped, what you're saying. Wait, wait, wait. What are you saying? <laughs> I'm just... I've had enough. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. She is. Taylor. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, I can hear you. Good. And then he hung up. <laughs> Kevin, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? I'm okay, Kevin. All right, well, I, um, I have to um, comment on, you said the, the guys that um, was the phone darn it. Well, I got to comment on that because my son's mom only had my son for, single, for the simple fact is that I look good. And that she was, um, I didn't know that she was looking for somebody that, that looked good to have a kid with. And I didn't know that she was, um... Kevin, like, you're 22 was, years old. Why did you need to have a kid? It was trapped, though. She was like, the first time we I ever, you know, had sex or intercourse, she put holes in the condom. And then later on, I found out about it. Jesus. How did she get her hands on your condom? Um, no, she brought condoms, you know. Yeah, oh, and, and I always tell guys, never take the chick's condom. Never. And this is why. Yeah, I know. And then, um, and I found out another reason she had a son with me. So back because I played football for a university. So she thinks that uh, her son will uh, play football for a university. I don't know. No, she just wanted a good-looking kid. That was other words, that's what she told me after uh, well, the whole. Thing. If it had to do with football. playing football for a university, that works out great if you have a boy. Uh, I don't. I don't. But know. if I she just... has a girl, man, who knows? She might have another queen, Fatifa. I don't know. But, you know, yes, I said Fatifa. Yes, you said Fatifa. <laughs> well, you know that I don't understand. I was trying to figure out like, why do girls you know, think like that, and why would they do something like that? Because if I knew what type of girl she was, I would have never, you know, got involved with that. Well, maybe you should have taken the time to get to know what kind of girl she was before you jumped into the sack with her. Yeah, yeah that's kind of I take it upon myself. You know, that's kind of my fault because I just see a good-looking girl. And I just. And does she nail you now for the child support? No. No? Oh, she'll come back at you for that. Yeah, well, you know, I hope, I hope not. Because, you know, she got her, uh, her, or her boyfriend slash girlfriend to take care of, you know, in it. For now? Yeah, for now. You know, so she don't want me to see him that much. Oh, you're killing me, Larry. Tom like it. one 800 5 tom one 800 5 800 Get in, get off, get out. That's my motto, man. Don't be stuck with one girl too long because there's nothing but headaches and problems. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, I'm Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our general number. Okay. More than half of women said in a survey in England that uh, they couldn't find the right guy to settle down with. They'd think about having a baby with a male friend. 1-800-5800-866. Mandy. I'm the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yeah, how you doing? Just great. Great. So I was just giving you a call. I know that you guys are talking about, um, you know, guys helping out girls being the dad and 
And, you know, I've listened to your show. I actually gave you about three months. And there were times when I was like, you know, this guy knows what he's talking about. But then I started listening to you, and it just seemed like you weren't really a product of what you really preach with your personal life. How so? Your views. Let's I've hear been it. I've married like four times. I mean, if it's, marriage is when so do bad. I, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, the reason I know marriage is so bad is because I've done it. Well, no, you're obviously not doing it right. You're trying to do it right. Darling, you, you, you obviously right. are not a regular listener. Because I have explained that on the air. And what I have explained on the air is that my parents were married 40 years. And I thought they did it right. And when my marriage did not work out, I thought I was doing it wrong. And so I kept trying to do it the way my parents did it. Well, it turns out now that marriage may have made sense in the 1950s when my parents were married. But it doesn't make sense for men in the 21st century. It just doesn't. Well, obviously, it doesn't make sense for you and other people. It works. It doesn't for. make sense for men. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that's your whole that's your whole clinch in your market. But that's I, I the just, fact. You know, there are the, you can you cannot name one benefit, not one, that a man would get from marriage that he could not get if he were not married. Not one. Oh, what about love? Do you know what love is? Hey, you Something know what? Like Do you think the only people who are loved are married? I think I think that you don't need to have. Do a you think that's a married. yes or no? That's a well. There you go. You don't need to have a contract to be married. But but the point is, yeah, being married has a legal definition. To be married means you have signed a legal contract. Right. So a man does not need to be married to get love. That goes back in the day. I mean, marriage is, is also this if you're is, a religious person as well. That's not the I mean, point. Marriage, marriage, marriage has married. a legal definition. And therefore, being married has a very specific meaning. And it does not mean just shacking up with the guy you have sex with. It is a legal uh, uh, obligation. And men generally pay the price for getting married if it doesn't work out. Well, you know, I'm a woman. I was married, and I got divorced, and I didn't ask for any alimony. It doesn't matter what you ask for. We're talking in general. And by the way, uh, obviously, you failed at it, too. Uh, yeah, I, of course, and you know what? I'll try it again when I find when I fall in love and I find the right person. Oh, there I'll you go. Get married because I believe in love and I believe in treating people right and I believe in being partners in this world. If we don't partner up and say, you know, why what? do we need to? Why do we need to partner up? On. Why does a man need that? Why does a man need that? Tell me why a man needs that. Tell me why a man needs that. Tell me why a man needs that. So you can have a, a stronger basis in life when you have a partner. I, mean, I have I have the strongest basis in life anybody could possibly have: financially secure, good job. Uh, I live in one place. I've had the same house for eleven years. You haven't been hit by someone spiritual when you have someone what? that can bring you to a level in your in your mind. And in I your am not life, spiritual. I'm an atheist. You. I'm an atheist. I'm not spiritual. Obviously, then you have a good line of work for you then, and that's why you... No, it has nothing to do with my line of work. I believe what I believe because I have experience and I know the truth. No, it's just called jaded, Tom. You just well, guess jaded. what? Being jaded doesn't necessarily mean you're wrong. No, it's not. Men, 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 men are done. right to be jaded about marriage, about uh, uh, having children, about uh, making commitments to women. Men have a right to be jaded. And until the divorce laws change for the better for men, men don't need to be married. Hey, that's your own opinion. and you know, uh, It's my opinion right and the opinion. opinion. It's the opinion of many others. And by the way, I don't know if you've read the statistics. Forget about what my opinion is. Men are getting married at the latest age in the history of the United States. Yeah, because of our society, man. People like you, the stigma that materialism is important. Materialism is important. It is. A Thank you. Zero tolerance policy, you and your filthy mouth. You're out! The BS word is still not permitted on the air, you idiot. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. It's Paul on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yeah, hi, Tom. I got a great story for you. About uh, 11 months ago, I hooked up with this girl at the bar. Um, I also hooked up with two of her friends prior to that. Uh, probably had something to do with why she hooked up with me. She wanted to test the waters. Uh, well, she ended up getting pregnant. And uh, here I was sweating bullets a little bit, worrying, you know, it is it mine, but I use protection. I follow the Tom Likas code. Well, one of my other buddies, and I guess she had a boyfriend, one of my other buddies that slept with her also. So time comes, she, you know, she had the baby about two months ago. And uh turns out 
it ended up being her boyfriend's baby, but anyhow, I found out one of my other buddies I hadn't seen for a while. I met him on the street, and he said, hey, buddy, he goes, you're in the clear. I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, you know that girl that you know, slept with, he said, she's got brown hair, the baby's got brown hair, brown eyes. He said, you're off the hook, buddy. It's not yours. And I said, wow. I said, you know, that's a relief. You know, that, that's great. And he said, well, she was talking to all of her other friends, which then I know all them, too. They were all got hoping that it was mine because he hangs out with these girls. And that's just a fine example of how these women out there, they just want to trap a guy in. Now she's stuck with her boyfriend. He's a nice guy. I guess I'm a nice guy, too, but not, you know, <laughs> luckily it wasn't mine. But it goes to show you how these girls, they just want to trap a man in with their erratic emotions and their hormones, and they believe this. Uh, and let me thing. guess, let me guess, you didn't use a condom. No, I did. I, I absolutely did. Oh, you did. did? So they were hoping the condom screwed up. Well, you know what? She was trying to get me not to use them. I actually went through two or three condoms that night. And I said, wait, wait, i got to get a condom. She laughed at me. She said, well, I'm on the pill. And I said, well, that's fine. I'm still going to use a condom. She kind of laughed at me, trying to encourage me not to use it. So, I mean, all these young guys out there that think that it's okay to do it without it, guess what? That could have been my kid. It's not. I used a condom, and, you know, thank God for that. Good point, Paul. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Debbie on the Tom Like His Show. Hi, Tom. Yes. I, I am calling to think, okay, you're thinking about the now, the right now, the you're hot, whatever. But what about when you become an old fart that, with nobody to take care of you? They're not going to take care of you. There's then. no guarantee. With, with one out of two marriages ending in divorce... And with two out of three marriages ending divorce in Southern California, there is no guarantee that the person you're with today will stay around to empty your bedpan. There's just no guarantee of that. There, there, I, I'm sorry. I disagree. I think there is a guarantee. Oh, there isn't. There is. I think there is. One out of two people married today will get divorced. But what if you're not one that doesn't? What if you're not one that doesn't? Well, put it this way: If you uh, the money you save on not spending money on women who like to spend, uh, will more than pay for reliable individuals to come do that kind of work for you. Have you seen the nurses that take care of old men? Have Actually, it depends on what you can afford to pay. And I think if you dump a woman who spends her money on handbags and and dresses and skirts and uh, all kinds of other run uh, uh, chick junk. Uh, that you can save a whole lot of money and get the absolute best of the best. I bet usually the young, dumb girls that spend their money on chick junk. It is not, it is not an accident. They say all the time when, when, when uh, after divorce, a man's standard of living goes up and a woman's standard of living goes down. This is a fact. Well, why do you think that is? Because he doesn't have to be there to pay her bills. I don't think so. There's a lot of women that actually have to pay alimony to the men because they can't make it. There are not that many of those, dear, because most women do not make more than the men they're with. That is why they say that women make 72 cents for every dollar a man makes. Because uh, in the aggregate, men make more money than women. Not really. That's a fact, dear. If you can't deal with statistics... Uh, no. I'm no? Okay. Well, I'm going to move on. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Don on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up? Not much. What's up, Dad? How you doing, Tom? Doing okay, son. Man, let me tell you what's going on. I had a, a girl that I was dating at my job. I had already had a girlfriend, right? And this girl has a baby. You know, she, I guess she thought she wanted me to try to take care of her baby and move my girl out. But I wasn't trying to have it. You know, she was like, you know, we had our lunch breaks. And, um, you know, I go do what I had to do on lunch break and after work. Because my girl, she goes to school at night, so she'll come over after after work, and you know, and I kind of do my thing after work, and then um, she started calling me like real late at night, you know, telling me she wants to do do you know the business, handle the business late at night, and I got kind of tired of it because she was kind of getting a little attached. So then I wasn't able to perform with her, at, you know, when she wanted me to. So then she started giving me the cold shoulder. So now, you know, things are off, you know, it's not going on anymore. She thought I caught feelings for her, which I didn't. You know, I did like her. I ain't going to lie, but I kind of knew where she was, you know, where her head was at. I know her head wasn't on straight. So now she don't talk to me no more. And um, it's kind of weird, wondering why the girl don't talk to me no more. So now I guess she found her new thing. And, 
you know, what do you think? Well, what does this have to do with what we're talking about? Oh, as far as don't tell anybody she wanted me to take care of her kid and everything. And no, 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 but uh, I'm talking about women who want you to have their kid. Well, I think she said that, too. She actually wanted me to kind of, you know, that's part of the problem. She wanted me to be more involved with her than what I was. Yeah, I, I understand that, but uh, what I don't understand is why, uh, uh, the, the first of all, why you would do something like that in the office, and second of all, why why do you need to make your life like a soap opera? I guess it was. It was fun. Come on, I'm a girl 21, I'm 34, you know? Well, I, I understand that, but it's your job. I probably spent 150 bucks in the whole three or four months I dated her. But aren't you afraid of what would happen if uh, things blow up and uh, you still have to come to work every day and see her at the office? That's what I did. That's the problem I'm having now. So that's why I'm like, what the? I didn't know you're not supposed to stick your... your not your, your supposed to dip your pen in the company ink. Exactly. I didn't learn that, that term until after I already started writing on paper. You know what I mean? So now the company ink is all over the place. Damn. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. No doubt about it. All right. Thanks a lot, Don. Thanks for the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.